How's it going? Um, welcome to the Inspire Podcast. This is episode 15, I think. And um, today is Thursday, December 28th, 2017. So, um, yay! This is the. <laughs> We're down to the wire, the end of the year. Um, it's been a quite a while since my last podcast. Um, not since I recorded, <laughs> but since I uploaded a video. Um, so, down to the wire. And I wanted to get it, get one in before the end of the year, so um, I could have waited until New Year's Eve and been even more of a procrastinator. But anyway, here I am. I'm here. Um, thank you so much for joining me. Um, if you are a returning viewer, thanks so much for coming back and believing in me. Um, and if you are a new viewer, then thank you so much for spending some time and checking me out, and I hope you like it. Um, anybody can contact me um, through Ravelry. Um, my Ravelry name is Nico Biko, and there's a Ravelry podcast group for this podcast, and that is Knitspired, because it's the Knitspired podcast. Um, it's very, uh, quiet and empty <laughs> in the podcast group, so, um, and that's fine, but you can definitely post something there or whatever, or contact me. Um, and also Instagram. Instagram is where I am most busy, um, you can always contact me, send me a message or whatever, or check me out or follow me or whatever. And my Instagram is Kamiko MC Knitspired. Um, yes. And you can also make comments below on YouTube. Um, feel free to do that. Make sure you subscribe. Well, you don't have to. You totally don't have to. But if you do subscribe and you want to know when the new podcasts are out, just click on the little, let's see, you'll be over here. So the little bell, it depends what browser you're using, I think. There's a little bell. Just click on that and it'll tell you when a new podcast is uploaded. Um, so yeah, those are the ways you can contact me. Definitely always feel free to contact me. I love to hear from people. Um, I'm loving this podcast thing. It's whoops, it's just fun, I guess. Um, and that's why I do it, for fun. Um, which is why I'm pretty sure most people do. Do it for fun. I don't even know what I'm talking about now. Um... So I did actually have a few notes, so if I am looking up and down, I'm really sorry. Um, like I said, I have I have podcasted in between time, but something happened to the video and it was like beyond blurry. You couldn't even see it. And then the part that wasn't blurry that came out okay the second half, I was going to insert it into this video, but I lost it. So that was really cool. Um, yeah, I have no idea where it went. And um, I'm not very organized, so that guess that's just how it is. So I, I also realized I have notes between notes for this podcast and then the notes for the last podcast so I can kind of incorporate them um, just so I don't forget anything. So um, first of all, I if you're like me or if you like other podcasters, um, you've probably been watching the Vlogmas videos, which are awesome. I love them because you kind of get little snippets of normal everyday life um, rather than them sitting down for an hour, 45 minutes, or an hour and a half, or even 30 minutes talking about knitting and other stuff, which is all great. We love that. That's why podcasting is so popular, I guess. Um, but the, oh, the Vlogmas, it's been really cool. Like, it's, it's just fun. Um, it makes them seem more of a person, I guess, like a more three-dimensional. I'm not really sure, but I think if you watch them, you understand what I'm talking about. Um, I'm so, I keep looking at the LCD screen because I'm really paranoid that it's either going to turn off or be very blurry. Um, it looks like it's not blurry. I had no idea it would even be blurry last time. I can't believe I did that. Anyway, so yeah, I just want to share the vlogmases that I've been enjoying the most. Um, there's um, the Volenvine one. Actually, I guess it would be Yarngasm. So Kristen from Yarngasm. Um, she had a few vlogmases out, and then she's really busy. Actually, anybody who does vlogmas or vlogging on a daily basis is, like, that's awesome. That's crazy. Because even if you don't have to edit too much, it's still kind of, it's a big deal. It's a, there's kind of a lot involved in it, so... Yay, for you guys who do that. Um, I wish I could do it. Well, I don't wish I could do it. I would like to do it. I just haven't put my mind to it yet. So, I will. It's, I think it's kind of fun. Anyway, it, plus it keeps things more regular when 
I can't do a sit down podcast because I'm very unorganized and I'm, I'm not really good at editing. So I don't know. Anyway, so I've been watching Yarngasm, um, Homespun House, uh, her Vlogmas, Molly's Vlogmas, um, also Knitting Expat and Brooklyn Knit Folk. Those are the four I've been watching the most. Funny story about Knitting Expat. Um, I just started watching her Vlogmas. Um, I've watched her podcast before, but I started watching her podcast when she first started, um, when I first started watching or being aware of podcasts. So I think she started like two and a half years ago and I really liked her, but then I kind of got distracted and lots of stuff was going on in my life. So I didn't continue watching her. And obviously I've been, um, aware of her. I did her knit along this last, the Road to Rhinebeck knit along. So I'm obviously familiar with her. I follow her on Instagram and stuff. Um, but I just restarted watching her podcast and I just like look at the stuff that she's done and how far she's come. And I'm just like, wow, she's awesome. So, um, yeah, to check her out if you haven't, I don't understand why you haven't because she's pretty popular, but yeah, everybody has their own taste, whatever. Like her, she's awesome. And her little, um, her vlogmas, she's really good. She's really good about it. And like, she's crazy busy. Like they moved apartments in New York city and then they went to London and, and she has a little baby, like a one year old. And she's like vlogging. Like, how are you not crazy? I'd be on my mind. That's why I don't do it. I'm not even moving. And my kid's three and a half. Um, and also Brooklyn Knit Folk. Okay. So I, she's been around a while and I just discovered her podcast. I have no idea why. I think I've heard of her before from probably from Kristen from Yarngasm. She did sound really familiar. So I think it came up in Vlogmas and I was like, oh, let me check her out. And oh my goodness, she is awesome. Um, her Vlogmas is, is great. Her Vlogmas is great. Um, she is a graphic designer living in New York City and she's originally from Tennessee, I believe. Um, and it kind of spoke to me that she's a graphic designer and she, cause I, a hundred years ago when I was in high school, I went to a vocational high school and that was my major, I guess you would call it, it was a graphic design. And, um, I don't know why I didn't stay in it. I think I didn't have much confidence, but I was really good. <laughs> I didn't have much confidence, but I was really good. Um, and I'm humble. <laughs> um, anyway, the fact that she is a graphic designer, um, I think that's really cool. So she's really good with color and stuff. Plus she quilts and I used to do that also. I think I've spoken about that in my podcast before. Um, so she's really cool. So I started watching her podcasts too. And, um, yeah, she's very interesting to watch. Also another one that I, another, it's not a vlogmas, but it's a um, podcast that I started watching that I have heard about. Um, but I never watched it was squirrel pie productions. Um, and I, she's, very different than others. I guess everybody's different. All the podcasters are different and that, that's what I love about it. So I started watching her and I love her stuff. She's got great style, completely opposite of me, I think, like completely, but I love it. And she's, for lack of a better word, talented. Like all the, all the knitters, anybody who works, anybody creative, but yeah, she's very talented. Cool thing is, another funny story, is I'm on Instagram and when you like hashtag your life away on Instagram, um, people see it. Well, she saw one of my things, she must have come across one of my hashtags when she was looking at something on Instagram and she liked one of my posts lately. So I was like, that is so cool. I kind of fangirled a little bit there. Um, yeah. And then one last one I've told you before, so I watch Legacy Knits, their podcast. Um, and their Sunday shorts, Chelsea's Sunday shorts, I think that's what she calls it. Um, she was vlog, vlogging vlogmas, um, at first, but she, she kind of had to lay off on it cause she's just really busy and she's about to have a little baby and, um, yeah, life's kind of crazy. So she stopped doing it, but it was nice to watch her little vlogmas thing too. She's always entertaining and, um, yeah, so that's that's just the stuff I've been checking out lately and being entertained by. Um, I think my, my favorite thing to do is it's so... I'm not a morning person. I'm more of a night person. Definitely a night person. I'll go to bed at like 2 or 3 in the morning. <laughs> and not meaning to, I just do. And Which is also dumb because I have a 3.5 year old, but that's besides the point. 
because there's coffee. I like to get up at like 7 because it's still dark outside now, like this time of year. In the summer it's like bright and everything, but um, I'll get up at 7, make my coffee, feed my cats, <laughs> and come up to my office and watch, like this, the last few weeks I've been watching Vlogmas. Um, or I'll catch up on I um, on, on other people's podcasts and stuff. Um, and it's just that's what I've been that's what I like to do in the morning and stuff. Oh, by the way, this is my office. This is just another area of my office. I thought maybe I would show off some of my yarn stash. Um, I think you might have seen this before, but um, I thought I would try a different setup today. Um, yeah. Hopefully the lighting is okay. But, um, is that all I wanted to say about that? So, um, yeah, I guess that's it for that. I didn't really, it, I did introduce myself. So I'm a, an American knitter living and knitting in Canada. <laughs> an American knitter, an American living in Canada, um, in Ontario. So, Southern Ontario, yeah. And that is, I am here because that is where my husband is from and his family is here and work and the whole permanent residence citizenship visa type thing um, it's easier to get in Canada and it's working and stuff yeah we're here because of him <laughs> and that's fine so originally I was from Rhode Island Massachusetts area and now I'm here um, and it is snowy and cold and minus 22 degrees outside Celsius not Fahrenheit so it's really cold um, yeah, I think that is it for that. Um, let me just make sure. Oh, so it's been this long since I podcast. Um, before Black Friday I, was the last time I podcast. Um, speaking of Black Friday, I just wanted to share this. I got an iPad, my very first iPad. It's um, the pink. Actually, actually, it's gold. It's the gold one. But I got the pink, the rose gold pinky color, I mean cover. So I got that for um, Black Friday. The Black Friday sales so I have some of my notes on this and some of them on paper <laughs> um, so again like I said don't mind me if I'm looking down and stuff um, sorry okay so yeah I'm going to show you what I've been working on um, so there you know if you've watched that I've been working on the box of socks Cal for 2017 and my last pair of socks that I finished sorry I'm gonna be bending over a whole lot so I apologize ahead of time my last pair of socks that I finished are these I don't even know I don't think they were I don't even think I had the yarn for this last time but they are just they do not look good at all here let's put them on a sock blocker um, they are sugar bush is the name of the yarn and I don't even remember the, the colorway, but they're just like a regular um, pattern that in my head, like just that I would knit normally um, with the heel flap, uh, the three by one twisted rib, which I, I just like to do. And then the grafted, the kitchener grafted toe. So there's two of them. Um, that is the last pair that I made completely, I think. Um, let's see. So... I'm honestly not even sure what I showed you last time. Um, I've been, I've also been working, so I've been doing the box of socks knit along and basically my box of socks is more like a basket of socks and this is some of them. <laughs> That's pretty cool. It's actually the first time I showed them all together. Um, plus these, plus I have one more on the needles. I will get to that in a second. I don't know if, so, um, I'm also doing the knit along for the Hey Sister podcast where, um, Tabby has three sock patterns that are out. Let me see. They're called Wonderland socks, snowfall socks, and sweater weather socks. So the Wonderland ones, um, are, oh, they're right here. I have not, they're finished, but not quite finished because I have to do the, um, the afterthought heel, the, the one where you cut into the back of it, and I haven't done that yet because um, I'm afraid, <laughs> but I'll do it because I want to finish it for the year. But that's one of them finished, and yes, I'm pretty sure I showed these last time, and that's the, like, these are both of them together. They're really cool. 
Um, that's just a Patton's Croix. Ooh, it might not be Patton's Croix. I think it might be Nako socks, but it's a lot like the Patton's Croix yarn. Um, like the work horsey, roughish feel, but they make great socks. Um, so that's her Wonderland socks for the Hey Sister podcast, and they're doing a knit along for her three her three um, sock patterns. And then these are the Snowfall socks. One second. And they came out really cute. This is with a Lion Brand Sockies yarn that I just got at Michael's. Um, those came out really nice. Oh, good. I think you can see the wavy pattern on it. I should have done it on a, um, like this yarn, I should have just made a plain sock like a sock and knit sock. So I should have used this pattern on like white or a, like another solid or tonal color, but I did it on this because I had this yarn. It does look actually, it does look really cool. And um, yeah, so there's two of those. So that's a true finished pair. Um, those are her two. And then I'm working on the third pair. Oh, here it is. This is made with Patton's Croix. <laughs> Patton's Croy socks in the Sunburst Stripes colorway. It's like rainbow-y. I needed a rainbow pair of socks. Um, Cause you know me in colors. And these are the, oh no, where'd you go? The sweater weather socks, which are also a, it's an afterthought heel, but it's cuffed down. And uh, look at that. Oh wait, it is the rainbow one. Oh my goodness, wow. Okay. so. They, this is the front of it. Let's see. There's like this really cool left cross and right cross cable. I'm not sure which is which. Um, going down the front of it. And then this is the back, the pattern on the back. I think I messed something up there, but I'm noticing that the second time, like it's like an every other pattern. So I'm not actually sure if that's in the pattern or if I'm just a real numbskull and just kind of made up my own thing happening there. But I don't know if you can see that in there, but I thought that it does look really cool. I, at first I was going to rip it back, but then I'm like, yeah, you know what? It looks fine. And it's a sock. Nobody's going to see it except me. And if it's, con if it's, um, continuous, like down here too, then that's fine. So hopefully they're just both the same. Um, so that's her second, her third pair in the knit along. And that knit along ends December 31st. I don't know if I'm going to get these finished, but it does say that works in progress are acceptable. So I don't know if that means that I've cast it on and I will finish it because obviously, you know me, I will finish socks. But yeah, that that's that third pair. And I am totally enjoying that pattern. That one's a little bit more, that pattern is a little bit more um, intricate. Um, I'm not really good at memorizing patterns. I know some people are, even if it's a very intuitive pattern, something about it, I'm like, I have to read the directions. Um, I just have a weird way of thinking it in my head, but I guess everybody has their own way of doing things. So I don't know. Um, sorry. One second. That's a nice view. Um, so, okay. As far as socks go, I've been working on my own. And if you follow me on Instagram, you know that I came up with my own pattern. Um, and we're going to go into this later, but these are my, these socks are called the, my firm, firmament socks. And if you don't know what firmament is, just look it up. <laughs> it actually means something to me. So, um, so these are my own pattern and it's funny. I didn't even know this. I started these before I even got that third pattern from the Hey Sister podcast from Tabitha. I have been noticing there's a trend in socks where the pattern is going down the back of the leg and I didn't even realize that her socks were like that, but, um, like I said, but I did that for these socks and of course it's kind of hard to tell, but you can see like there's that and then it goes around to that side, but that goes down the back of the leg and it's a really easy pattern. Um, but it's beautiful. It looks really pretty. Um, I want to show it to you. Oh, and it's just like a regular, I did my three by one per, um, three by one twisted rib. So my cuff stands out and then a regular kitchener grafted toe. Um, and I do, them, I do them cuff down. So this is the back of it. I'm going to show you what it would look like on the back of the leg. If that shows up, if that translates well, you can see that. I love it. I love it. Love it. Love it. And 
um, I'm looking for test knitters. So if you do that, um, or you know anybody who does, I am interested in finding some test knitter worthy people. I knew my camera was going to turn off. I think after a certain amount of time, it thinks nothing is happening and then it stops recording. So I don't know if there's a setting on it or maybe I just need a new camera. Anyway, so yeah, I need test, test knitters for these socks. I'm excited about that. It's all written up, it's on a PDF and everything. Then, um, and oh, and the, the yarn for that is Regia. It's like a four ply. And it's, I think the colorway is Lollipop. Um, and then these are Cascade yarns. This, this yarn is Cascade. I don't really remember the yarn, but I think it's really cool looking. Um, and these are my own pattern also, however, they're a dud. There's also a pattern going up the back of it. Um, they knit up really, um, really fast and they were easy, but um, this one's a little bit more intricate than the other one. Not by much, but um, it came, it, they're cute, but they're not exactly what I was thinking. And I will do something with them, but not this pattern. And I will have, I'll need test knitters for that too. But again, three by one twisted rib in the top. Um, I figure if it works, I'm going to stick with it. Um, and the grafted toe, the Kitchener grafted toe, and just like the heel flap knit from the cuff down. I love them. I love the yarn. I'm really happy like the way it came out. It's, I don't know, it's pretty. So I did show this yarn on my podcast. I think maybe my last one. So I'm going to, all right guys, check this out. So my speckle and pop, I don't even know where I was on it the last time, but it was sitting there for being naughty for a little while. Um, I, I couldn't do it. That first clue was like, oh my God, it took four freaking ever. Well, I plundered through it and of course I'm mid row, of course, and just of course. I flew through clue two, that rhymed a lot. And then I'm on to clue three and clue two and clue three. I'm, I'm loving this. I cannot wait. Oh no. <laughs> I'm dropping everything. Holy moly. I cannot wait to finish this, but I can. I may just be buried in it. I might wear it forever. Um, okay. Let's see. This is the, I'm not even sure. Okay. That's the front. Um, I did post about this on Instagram a while ago too, with the, <laughs> the thing about the, uh, stitch markers, but that is what it's looking like now with the clue two and three happening. And it's like short rows and some cool stuff happening there. It's really hard to see clue three. This is what I want you to check out is quite interesting because it used up every stitch marker I had and every stitch marker I didn't have. So I was like pulling things to be stitch markers out of everywhere that I could find. I've got all of these little guys, like these little plastic split ring ones. They're not split rings. They're split rings, but you can secure them together. I went to the ugliest things that I just had laying around for years. These little white things. I don't even know what those are for. I think I got those like a hundred years ago. I don't even know why I have them, but they came in handy. Then I have like little, like, is it jump rings? I don't know. They're like little key rings right there. More of these plastic split rings. And then I got this one, which I made. Um, I got other little charms recently too, but it's like a little snowman. No, <laughs> it's a little happy cloud. Um, I don't know how this, how well this camera focuses close up. I don't think it does an auto thing. So there's that. Then there's like this one. I don't know what that's from. There's this from like a high, high sharps. There's, oh, I made that one too. A little snowman. There's a snowman. A little shoe from years ago that I made. A little charm from a shoe. A little flower charm. A couple flower charms. I've got another shoe. Oh, it's getting caught up in it actually. Shoe charms. I've got a progress keeper that my mom made for me. I've got be like beaded charms that are progress keepers that I've made recently. A purse. Um, things that are supposed to be progress keep progress keepers, but I haven't made them yet. But I put them on there anyway. <laughs> like every, it's crazy little beaded ones that I made. 
like it's the amount of stitch markers on this is insane. This this thing just looks absolutely insane right now. Um, but it's gonna look so cool. And I'm sure you've seen um, finished objects of the speckle and pop. I love the big holes in it. And I gotta say, this has to do go along with my um, New Year's goals and my knitting, my new knitting goals. Stephen West or whoever wrote that pattern for Speckle and Pop is very, very kind because they gave the option for garter stitch mania or brioche. And let's just say I went with garter stitch, and I'll get into that later. Um, baby items. I'm not pregnant. <laughs> Um, but my sister-in-law, my brother's, I mean my brother's, my husband's sister, just had a baby. Actually, she had it yesterday. Um, we're not very close, but, like, we, they don't live very close to us, like, as in a couple cities over, but not that far. It's just, um, she has a lot of little kids, and she doesn't drive, and we don't really get out there, and he's not really close to her, so I don't really know her. You know how that goes? Um, but anyway, she's just had a baby, a little girl. She's got an older girl and then she's got three little boys and then she had a girl again. So that was super exciting. And this is not blocked or, well, it's woven in, but I don't have buttons on it and it's not blocked, but it's the, um, I wanted to make her a couple things for the baby. I have not seen the baby yet, but I cannot wait to see the little tiny baby. This is the purpurium sweater, I think you call it. And it, um, it's not blocked yet. So it buttons, it goes like this. It kind of like closes over like that like those little baby t-shirts and um the sleeves oh no I made these sleeves short on purpose I'm like these look really short I made them she can wear them over like a, a one sleeve a long sleeve onesie so I made that for her super cute I don't even know if I've held if I held it up really cute are they this tiny like are they that little and this is not woven in or blocked either but I made this little hat with leftover yarn from that to match it it's crocheted like, so little. And and then I made, I was going to make the um, Hello Baby cardigan by Clo Spud and Chloe, I think it is. But I ended up making almost the whole thing and I could not do the collar right. So I was like, you know what, screw this. I ripped it apart and I made, I'm making a tiny little hat instead. It's weird because for my youngest, I made that same little cardigan. And um, I don't remember having trouble with it. So I don't know what I did. Maybe I did something different, but this is a little hat. I'm actually right in the decreases as you can tell. So, but this is so tiny and it's, it's kind of just a mess right here, but it's actually my own pattern. I think I might write it up and just put it on my projects. It's just a garter stitch band and then regular stock in that stitch. And it's going to be, um, <sighs> decreased into a nice little hat. I might put, I might put those little, um, those little teddy bear ears on it. I noticed those are pretty popular lately. So the yarns I used for that, um, I was like, oh, I'm just gonna go to the store and grab something because I don't know her very well. Not that it matters, but, um, and I wanted to knit something up really quick. So I got one of those um, Karen cakes for this. As I was knitting it, it made me very sad. I, like, I'm, I'm happy with the sweater and it's soft and it's cute and everything, but the yarn, it is, I was like, I will never, ever, 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 ever knit with this again for a garment, ever. It was just, it made my fingers feel, and acrylic totally has its place. How And for that matter, this little mess of spaghetti yarn that's happening here is also 100% acrylic, and it's way softer, but it's not that plasticky feel, like, um... The Karen Simply Soft, I feel I find like that's very plasticky and acrylic-y. This one actually feels like a cotton. Um, <laughs> my daughter's yelling. I'm going to have to pause this in a second. Um, this is, this feels really nice. So I could definitely see myself knitting something up real quick, maybe for my daughter or for another baby. And it's um, acrylic, so it's great for babies. But oh my goodness, that Karen Cakes, it was not okay for... A baby sweater it's soft and it's fun it'll be great on her I wouldn't I wouldn't give it to her otherwise I am happy with the way it turned out but just knitting it just didn't feel good okay um, that's what another thing I'm working on I'm gonna pause it right here because I have to go tend to my daughter I think it's bedtime okay so baby is in bed all is well in the world again that got a little dramatic um, what else am I working on um, I'm glad you asked so I got some yarn a couple months ago in September for the, at the grand opening of a local yarn store 
and I brought Pete with me, my husband, and I told him to pick out some yarn because that's what you do. And that's kind of like a thank you for joining me in the yarn store, right? How could I not thank him? Well, originally he did pick out yarn and I cannot find the ball band. It's some awesome, yummy, delicious alpaca. And I know I've showed this before, but he we bought two skeins of this. It's kind of like a marled. I don't know if that, if that is considered barber pole. I don't think it is. But it's like a marled um, brown and gray and black. And it's super soft and delicious. I was going to make some uh, convertible mitts for him, but um, I didn't. <laughs> I decided that I was going to knit up a scarf for him, and this is it. And it's kind of like a a broken, okay, let's see if I can even get the texture, maybe. It's like a broken rib, so it's like a knit two, purl two, and then on the other side it's just knit. Um, and I think I'm just going to write up a, a nice free pattern for this, and um, it's a really, it would be like a really cool guy scarf. Or girl, unisex really, but nice for a guy if you want to knit something up. However, I hate knitting scarves, so I might do it like a cowl um, option and also. But it's you know it's for my husband and he he's cute and he came to the yarn store with me, so I will spend the time doing that. I was hoping to have it finished by the end of the year, but um, it won't be. But it's it'll I'll, this knits up so fast. I've been um, watching Netflix and knitting this, and it's really fast. So yeah. Happy with that. Uh, I wish I could tell you the yarn. I just know, I know it's alpaca. I think it's baby alpaca. So that is so nice and warm. And I put it up to his face, or actually his neck, because he has a beard, so he wouldn't really be able to feel it. And he's like, yeah, that's soft. I don't think he knows it's for him. I don't think he really made the connection, but he'll be happy when he gets it. Because <laughs> I had asked him a while ago, like, would you like a scarf? And he said, yeah. And I think he would look really hot in a scarf, so yeah. That is another thing I'm working on, and let's see. So now I'm going to show you, okay, this is the part of the video that I thought I could insert here and then just be on with the rest of the video and not have to record anymore, but here I am recording more because I lost that video somehow. Well, I got this big box from Nitpicks. Whoa. Well, um, look at that. There's my address. Um, they didn't just send it to me. I ordered it. <laughs> Because I am doing um, the Comfort Fade Cardi, and I could not find um, DK weight yarn, which is what the pattern calls for, and I wanted to, um, so I decided I would just dye my own um, and make up like a nice little kit for myself to start a um, the cast on on New Year's Day or maybe New Year's Eve, probably New Year's Day. <laughs> let's be honest. Um, and so I I purchased, I made a purchase on. Knit picks, and then I realized that if you spend this much money, you get free shipping. And then I did, and then I realized that's American dollars, and in Canadian dollars, that costs a lot more. So I ended up spending way more than I meant to, but that's okay, it's yarn. So I bought um, six skeins of this. It's a bare yarn, merino style DK from Knit Picks, a good old, nice. Um, 246 yards, 100 grams. So I bought six skeins, which is enough to dye up all the four colors for the Comfort Fade Cardi. Hope I have, okay, I only have two right here um, because four of the other ones are drying. They're, they're hanging there drying and I have to um, re-skein them and then wind them up into balls and we'll be good to go. Um, I'm really hoping I'm not blurry right here. If I am, I'm going to have to keep that. I don't, I don't think I am. Uh, anyway, the other yarns are, like I said, they're drying because I've already dyed them and I will hopefully show them. I'm hoping I don't have to over dye. I hope once they're skeined up and, or actually wound up into a ball that they look good to my eye and I'll kind of be able to gauge whether or not I like them or not. Otherwise that's going to be a lot of work and I won't be casting on January 1st because we're busy the next couple days. I hope that goes well. So along with that order, since I had to spend an exorbitant amount of money on knit picks, I also purchased, and I don't know why I just purchased one, I think I'm like doing a rainbow theme thing, but I bought the um, Knit Picks Felici in Hopscotch. It's kind of like a, it's rainbowy, but um, like more pastel-y, but not quite pastel. 
But I only bought one ball. I don't know what I was thinking. So it's more like pinks and purples and yellows and then like some turquoise and it looks like there's white in there. I'll figure something out with it. I'll either use it in a shawl or use another contrasting color for um, heels and cuffs in a sock or make like a Frankenstein sock or something. Not a big deal. I will find a way. And then I also bought um, their Hawthorne Fingering Weight sock, well, four sock yarn, in Blueberry Speckle and it's a 80% superwash fine highland wool and then 20% polyamide. So this is 100 grams and this will definitely make a pair of socks. And like I said, it's in Blueberry Speckle. And this was one of the ones that in the reviews people were like, that's pretty true to color as far as their swatches on the website. So I wanted something that I'm not, I don't really care because once I order it and then I get it in the mail, I kind of forget what I was getting, what I purchased anyway. So it could have been anything, but I was like, well, let's just get that. And um, yeah, it's really pretty. Um, that's that. And I also purchased because I've been realizing the value of good, of better needles, of get, of, yeah, of using better needles lately. Um, and so I was like, well, let's try something different. Um, so Knit Picks has this thing where I think it's called the Try Me. It's a good thing you can't see around me because it's a mess over here. So it's called the, oh, it's called the Try It needle set. So it came with, let's see, um, a size four millimeter Caspian wood tips, which is these guys. And then, oh, that's a US size six. And then a four and a half millimeter size nickel plated tips, that's US size seven. I, I, am, a, I am partial to the nickel or the, the metal tips as opposed to the wood, but these are better than the wood needles that I have. Um, so it's an interchangeable set, and then it comes with a 24-inch cable and a 40-inch cable, like so right here. And then it comes with the end caps and the tightening key. And then I added on a 4.5 millimeter, 3.75 millimeter tip for also, because I need the 3.75 and the um, 4, I think, for um, the Comfort Fade Cardi, I think. Although I knit kind of tight, so I might go up a size in each where they designate those sizes. You know what I mean? But so I got those two, and I believe that is all I got. Let's check my receipt, shall we? I got the needle set, the nickel plated tips, the bear yarn, the speckling, and the finger. Yep, that is all I got. I feel like I should have gotten a lot more than that, but no, you know what? I got thousands of yards worth of yarn for the Comfort Fake Hardy, and it was a lot cheaper than it would have been if I bought yarn that was already dyed, but we'll see how it turns out. I'm not really sure. Okay, so I actually have a question for you guys. I see people, when they show off their awesome, beautiful projects, they remember the yarn, the name of the yarn, the colorway of the yarn, and all that stuff, and I am terrible at remembering that. I'm terrible at keeping organized, this is the extent of my organization of my ball bands. And granted, most of my stuff is Patton's Croy socks, but like sometimes it would be nice to remember like the colorway and stuff. So I'm not really sure. I want to keep that organized this year and like keep a good knitting journal um, and just be more organized with that kind of stuff so I can remember stuff and maybe like go buy that yarn again or if somebody asks what what yarn is in that pattern, in that sock or whatever, I can be like, oh, it's this brand in that colorway. Or, and it's also, it would come in handy for um, knitting up, making my own patterns because then I'll be able to put that on the pattern, you know? Um, I don't know, what do people do to organize their yarn? Because I know some people keep like organized journals of the yarns they used and the patterns they made. Um, I am a notebook person. I love notebooks. Um, this is one of my notebooks. This is um, a knitting notebook that I have <laughs> knitting notes. I was using a labeler that we bought and just practiced playing around with it. So this is my knitting notebook and I keep a lot of notes when I'm doing, like when I'm knitting a pattern that I've purchased. Um, so there's these. This is like for my everyday ideas and stuff. It's not really a journal or a diary per se. It's just to stuff to write down, but I've got notebooks and papers everywhere, and then I have something as crappy and cheap as these little pads of paper. 
So I need to keep everything more organized. Um, one thing though, you know that store Sally Beauty? Um, I know they have it in the States because I used to go there all the time, but they have it here too. Well, I recently purchased something there, some big purchase, and I guess with the if you spend a certain amount of money, you got this. And it's a three notebook set. <laughs> that one says, hello, beautiful. And the little roses. I'm not crazy about this one, but it's pretty. And then this one, black and white, kind of polka dots. So this came in a set, and I was like, oh, that'd be great for um, keeping track of knitting stuff. And then there's like this little guy is good for... Um, I don't know, keeping in a knitting, keep, like, I guess maybe keeping track of rows, tally marks and stuff. I don't know if anybody else does that, but I'm crazy with the tally marks when I'm knitting a pattern to keep track of stuff, because I can't do it in my head, and that's just how I keep track of it. Um, so if anybody has ideas on keeping organized with your knitting projects, and basically, okay, so I kind of talked about, like, what I've done in the past and my progress through the year, and then that kind of brings me to like what my knitting goals are for the coming year. So I was thinking back to the beginning of this year and I've come a really long way <laughs> as far as knitting. Um, my techniques, I've really um, stepped out of my my comfort zone, I guess. Um, I've done things that I normally wouldn't have done. I was, I, like I said before, I've been knitting for years and years and years. And I was in Scarfland and Hatland for a really long time. And then this year I've really... Um, just really come out of my knitting shell, I guess you would, you would call it. So, like, I've, I've done that whole box of socks thing. I have all of these socks this year. At the beginning of the year, I had knit a couple of socks before that, but now I, like, I have it in my head. I don't even have to write it down. Um, so now I'm coming up with my own patterns and stuff like that. I've made shawls this year. I've done knit along. So I've really, really stepped out of that easy comfort zone. I always have something easy to go on the needles, usually a pair of socks, which a year ago I would have been like, yeah, right, that's not easy to bring on the go, but now it is. Um, so I've really come a long way this year, but I haven't really kept track of my progress. So I think with one of those notebooks, I might keep track of my progress. And at the time, as I'm taking notes on something, it's not going to feel like anything. But looking back on it, I think it's going to make a big, big difference. Um, this year, so 2017 was kind of like, for me, the year of the sock 2018, a few months ago, I would have said, no way, absolutely not, because I had not liked, I have not liked knitting sweaters at all, but I think I've been knitting the wrong patterns, um, so I think 2018 is actually going to be the year of the sweater, and I wanted to do a knit along of some sort, but I don't really have a lot of people that I know that are knitters, um, to really validate having a knit along, you know what I mean? Um... And like other, I noticed that I was watching Yarn Gasm the other day and I think she's doing a sweater knit along for the year. So I was like, well, you know what? She's got that one. <laughs> I'll probably just join in on that. And um, it would be nice to have like maybe knit one, knit, knit one sweater every three months, like for every season. So you have four sweaters at the end of the year. And there's quite a few patterns that I'm interested in that are like super, super simple, but will look great. And it's like, how many sweaters do I have that are my own? Not a lot that I've knit. <laughs> so it would be nice to, to kind of do to do that. Um, so that is one of my goals for next year is to, well, to be more organized and keep track of my progress. Um, keep track of my yarn. <laughs> That's another thing. Um, and my one love that I just keep coming back to is designing, which you'll, you'll see. I made the, I designed those socks. They're nothing special, but they are to me. And I have quite, quite a few ideas up my sleeve and they're mostly socks, but I have other ideas too. Um, to me, socks, because they're so easy, and I feel like anybody can knit socks. Like, some people learn how to knit by knitting socks. So, I have quite a few designs up my sleeve, um, and I'm hoping to make that baby happen this year. <laughs> um, I just keep coming back to it. I, for years and years and years, I'm a designer. I think that's it, plain and simple. I like to design and create. And, um, that's my thing. So I really have to like jump on that and find out how to do that and how to do it right and how to do it good. So, um, let's see, what else did I want to do this year? Also, yeah, I want to be more scheduled with my podcasts and be more organized. It, basically it all comes down to being more organized. So if I have a nice setup, um, I'll stick with it and I'll be able to pop that camera on and then pop it onto my computer, edit it. And I do have that with the iPad, I could probably do the iMovie 
thing. I haven't even tried recording with the iPad. Maybe I should do that. Um, I feel like they have a pretty good camera. I'm not sure. And I, there's just new te new techniques that I would like to try this year. So going back to that speckle and pop, I said whoever wrote that pattern was very, very kind because they included garter stitch mania instead of brioche. You could do brioche. There was an option for brioche and there was an option for garter stitch. And I was all set for the brioche. And I'll be honest, I don't know how to do brioche. <laughs> Not that I don't know how to do it, I've never actually done it in a pattern. I've watched many tutorials, I've tried it, and I got it. But I'm not skilled at it. I haven't actually done it in a pattern and I don't want to mess anything up. So after all that knitting, I didn't really want to try it in the speckle and pop. So brioche knitting is something I am obviously tackling for next year. Um, I get it. Like, I totally get it. Um, but I haven't done it yet. So whoever wrote that, or well, Stephen West, thank you for writing that pattern and making it also accessible to somebody who is a little stubborn and a little um, not wanting to be challenged at this point in the year. <laughs> um, and also I saw on Instagram, I think it's called Fisherman's Stitch, and it looks like a knit pearl stitch, so it's like a knit pearl rib, but it's more like squishy and springy, I think, and like um, text, uh, texture, but warm, thermal. I think that's the word that I'm looking for. Um, so I want to check that one out and give that a try. It's not hard. <laughs> um, I looked it up, obviously. So that is my, those are my goals for the year. I'm looking around to see if there's anything that I missed. Um, oh, I, so I've, <laughs> one, a couple things I forgot with my works in progress. Um, I've been working on the sock head hat, but I kind of put that aside um, for my dad. But I will finish that one soon. It's like, nearing its end, like I'm almost done with it. Um, I just had to put it aside for a while to focus on other stuff. Sorry, Dad, not that he's watching. And also, oh yeah, my Find Your Fade shawl. I thought I was going to um, finish that this year, but I don't think I'm going to just because I really wanted to get some other stuff off the needles and um, yeah, get that stuff done. But the Find Your Fade is like nearing its end. Like I'm almost done with that, so that's good. Um, and I think I'm just going to check my iPad notes just to make sure I'm not missing anything. Um, I did. Oh yes. Yeah. So I wanted to make a project bag. Um, I'm not crazy about sewing. I know how to sew, but like when it comes to more than sewing straight lines, I'm like, I don't really like to do it, <laughs> but I can sew for sure. Um, so I wanted to make a project bag. I got this like hanger and for a project bag and I can never find what I want when I look online and I never know like what's a good one, who's a good, who, who, who makes them well. Um, cause mine would get pre pretty beat up, but I definitely need project bags and I wanted to find a fabric that had like fun unicorns and fun rainbows on it, but I couldn't when I went into the store to, to find fabric. But I did find, I did buy some fabric, um, and it's, I kind of put it, again, put this on the back burner too, but I started making, it's a zippered, um, it's a medium, oh, it might be a large size, but I think a medium size zippered project bag with a, a little handle that you can take on and take off, and it's, it's got the fusible interfacing, so it's like thicker and it stands up, so. This is it. This is what I've got so far. Here's the zipper in the middle, and then that will be, if you can imagine, this is the bottom of it. These are both the bottom parts of the bag, and then this is the top part of it. And then the lining is this white with, like, orange pin dots. Is that what you call it? That's the lining on the inside. So I just got to finish that up, and that'll be cute to, um, to have my little projects in. Definitely want to make some more project bags for myself, um, but they are a lot of work. So to whoever makes project bags, you guys are awesome. Like it takes a certain kind of person to do certain things. I'm a knitter. I like to write patterns. Everybody's got their thing. I don't even like to dye yarn. <laughs> I kind of suck at it, but anybody who dyes yarn too, you guys are awesome too. My camera went off again. Um, let's see, was that anything? Oh yeah, okay, so the, I wanna do the socks next year. I'm sorry, I'm all over the place. 
you know by now this is just me. I, I, I want to do the um, the sweaters next year. I will definitely be working on those because my first cast on for the year is the Comfort Fade Cardi. So yay. Um, but I'll always have um, my love socks on the needles. So, because I have so much yarn that I purchased this year, that would be great for socks. Because um, I feel like you could use more socks than shawls. Am I right? Um, yeah, so I have some really beautiful yarns to uh, to use up this year. Because this thing is, it's not a, a big stash of yarn uh, as compared to some people, but it's a lot of yarn. And I'd like to kind of get it used up and um, so I can justify buying a lot more yarn next year. Um... And then, oh yeah, so I have a lot of scrap yarn, like a ton of scrap yarn, and I want to definitely put that into scrappy blankets, and the idea of a, the granny stripes is actually growing on me. I might do some variation on it, but why not, right? I think, I think I might just go there. <laughs> um, unless somebody has a better idea. I did, I, I could do like a shawl, like a scrappy shawl. I like that kind of thing, but I have a lot. And, I, and of course I have my hexagon, crocheted hexagons, which apparently is a thing. Like I didn't know that people were doing that. I swear I wasn't copying anybody. I didn't realize other people were doing that. I found out by some other thing. I'm like, oh wow, I look like a big old copier. But I do have crocheted hexagons from Scrap Sock Yarn. And that will be a, a nice cozy blanket too, but I have way more scrap yarn than that. Um, yeah, I have a lot of scrap yarn. And, oh, and I just wanted to share one thing. So I was watching, actually I got this, um, I mentioned the Brooklyn Knit Folk podcast in the beginning. And she, one of her earlier podcasts, she was talking, I guess she was a vegetarian or vegan or tried to eat vegan or vegetarian a lot. Um, so she was talking about this book that she got, that she had, um, and it's called, it's this book, The Lookbook Cookbook. Hopefully that's not backwards. It is right now, but I think it's not when, um, I upload. But it's The Lookbook Cookbook, and it's, um, vegan cooking. And it doesn't use meat substitutes, it's like all fresh ingredients, which I like, because I don't like meat substitutes. I did not become vegan... I became vegan because I don't like meat, <laughs> so I don't want meat substitutes. I do use meat substitutes, um, that's probably more because of my husband because he does like that. Not that he liked meat either, but just just because it's easy sometimes, um, like for tacos. Or like breakfast sandwiches, I don't know. Anyway, this, this book, it looks really cool. Um, however, I don't think I'm cool enough for it because it's got like girls like that. And girls like, um, like that, and like that. That's for cool people. I'm not really a cool people. But I was thinking about maybe getting it for my sister and my daughter, because they're cool people to me. <laughs> um, but the recipes look really cool, so I don't know. I got the book on my favorite online store. Amazon, everybody's favorite online store, but there's really cool recipes in here. Like even, you know, those, um, I don't know if I can find it now, but that I saw, it. Uh, oh, coconut curry, ooh, vegan pad thai, stuffed red peppers. You know, when you have a tomato, is it caprice salad? It's on a stick and it's tomato, basil, um, goat cheese or, oh no, no, mozzarella cheese and something else. And like those together, it's really good. Well, they had, I noticed they have one that um, you make the little cheese balls out of, oh, Caprice Bites, that. You make the cheese balls out of cashews and basil and lemon juice, I think. So I'm gonna try that, that's really cool. And then basil leaves and cherry tomatoes, cause I love that kind of stuff. Um, cause I eat like fun stuff. I don't like to have like your typical meal. Anyway, I got that that cookbook, that really cool cookbook for really cool people. Um, I'm not trying hard. I'm just I really liked it because it had really good vegan dishes in it. And I don't normally buy cookbooks because I do everything online, but um, I thought that was worth the purchase. And I think that is it. And this is going to be a really long podcast, and I'm really sorry 
if you're bored. So I am going to cut it off right there and I'm going to do probably a quick little video on my socks for the year, um, but I won't be podcasting until after the new, the new year, which is just next week. So I hope everybody is having a wonderful time of year. <laughs> non-denominational because you know um I, I hope everybody's just enjoying this time of year because it's really cold out um everybody loves summer but you have to have winter sometimes most people have winter so yeah, just stay cozy and um keep knitting and have fun and talk to me i would love to hear from you and yeah i think that is it see you later